Hi friends, we're gonna try something a little bit different today. I really miss reading to you. I've been trying to do the YouTube videos of books that have been read, but I don't feel like they do enough, a good enough job explaining the story elements. So I'm going back to filming myself, but I'm gonna film it this way, and hopefully you can hear me better. So today's book is an A from Miss Keller, written and illustrated by Patricia Polacco. The last book we read, Mr. Wayne's Masterpiece, we learned that um, Patricia overcame her fear of being on stage and she ended up being on fire, that picture at the end, which was my favorite picture. And she was successful and a wonderful public speaker from that point on. Today, we're gonna learn about this and how this teacher helps her fulfill her dreams. So I'll start with this, she always has a beginning. I had to admit that I was feeling pretty flattered about being chosen for Miss Keller's writing class. But there were all those rumors about her, like she had an evil temper, held grudges, and took a deep and abiding personal delight, dislike to some of her students. And that in her entire career, she had never given a student an A. Everyone called her Killer Keller, even other teachers. Well, the story is called an A from Miss Keller, so I wonder if someone gets an A. Hmm, I wonder. This is Pop, and that's obviously Patricia. Main characters. No, so, Miss Keller speaks with a s southern accent. I don't have a, I can't do a southern accent, so you'll just have to pretend. On the first day of class, Miss Keller, Keller, Keller slithered into the room and strutted up and down the aisles, snarled, I'm going to transform each and every one of you into a Cracker Jack writer. One enormous miracle, right? But she barked in a deep southern accent. If you think this class is going to be simple, head for the door right now. You're going to work harder than you've ever had to work in your entire miserable litter lives. Some of you may not make it through the term. I felt as though she were looking right at me. Miss Keller seemed taller than she really was. She stood stiff and erect, but, she went, but when she was at her desk, she reminded me of a bird of prey, perched on a dead limb, ready to swoop down on all of us. Look at the kids. There's a lot of feeling in those words, right? I think you get a, a and look at how she drew her. I think you get a sense of how she feels about this teacher slithered down the aisles. What slithers, friends? Mm -hmm. Your first assignment is going to be an essay. I expect you to dazzle me, impress me, send me into ecstasy with your brilliance. I want to see if you deserve to be in here at all. The subject, your families, and your home life. The inside story. We all scrambled, took out paper, and started to write. No, no, not in class, she boomed. We all dropped our pencils. This is a homework assignment. Three full pages, no grammatical errors, due tomorrow. Nope. I swallowed hard. The whole way home, all I could think about was that essay. It just had to be good. I turned up the hill and walked toward my house. Pop Schloss, our next door neighbor, was sitting on his front steps. He lived alone. Wife gone, kids grown. He patted the step next to him. Bad day, he asked, pulling a bag from his pocket and offering me a newly baked cookie. Pop, known far and wide for being a master pastry chef, always carried cookies in his pocket. I have the meanest teacher in the whole wide world. Not Killer Keller. Pop pretended to hold his breath <gasps> in shock. I nodded. Hmm, both my sons had her in school. Remind me to tell you a story about her sometime. We both sat and watched the birds land on the telephone wire across the street. Like I said, that essay has to be good.
That night I took my desk, I took to my desk and began to write. I loved my room and it was a big part of my home life. So I looked around and began to describe it in detail. I wrote about how I love my cat, my mom, my new skirt, eating breakfast. I felt masterful. This was, I thought, some of the best writing I've ever done. I could hardly wait to read it out loud in class. Oh, look at that, see? She's not nervous anymore. Mr. Wayne solved that problem. Oh, well, that doesn't look too good, <laughs> right? The pictures always tell a story too. The next morning, one by one, my classmates read their essays out loud. I wasn't afraid to read, but I was sure nervous. Then I heard my name, Miss Barber, you're next. I read my masterpiece about my family, my home life, and about how I loved everyone and everything about it. I was sure Miss Keller would be impressed, but she started pacing. That means walking back and forth. Miss Barber, you use the word love to describe your cat, your skirt, your neighbor, a pile of pancakes, and your mother. Do you feel the same about the plate of pancakes as you do your mother? Words convey feelings, but there are differences. Class, take out a piece of paper and make a list of words that convey love. But love is the one word you cannot use. We all tried, but our lists were very, very short. All right, class, she swept to the front of the room. Do you know what a thesaurus is? And no, it's not a prehistoric lizard. No one could answer. This is your assignment for tonight. Figure it out. Bring a thesaurus to class and look up the word love. So do you remember today in Miss Daisy's is crazy how you had to look up words that were hard to spell and you had to write the word and then do a synonym, a word that meant the same thing? That's what a thesaurus does. Thesauruses are books that are, it's kind of like a dictionary, it's organized like a dictionary, but they have, like it'll say love and then it would have the words after it that mean something similar to love, mean the same thing but different, way, different, different ways to use the word love. Okay. All right. After I got home that afternoon, I ran next door to see Pop. A thesaurus? I think I still have mine that the boys used when they were at Head Miss Keller. He bubbled as he trundled into their old room. And yes siree, here it is. He pulled out a small paper bag from a pile of books. All the words are listed in alphabetical order. And in the, black, and, and in the back? word choices, over 150,000. If I remember Miss Keller, this book will be your Bible from now on. That means a very important book. That very next day, Miss Keller wrote a list of words on the board, content, cool, loyal, and told us to use our thesaurus to list as many alternatives to each word as we could find. Whoever got the longest list would be excused from the Friday quiz. Guess what? I had the longest lists. I actually done something right. No quiz. But out at recess, Eric Yangden and Tim Farkas started teasing. Looks like the Dumble is teacher's new pet. As the days passed, Miss Keller gave our class all kinds of writing exercises to do. Sometimes in the classroom, sometimes out. We went outside one day to listen to trees to sharpen our senses. Miss Keller said we listened in on conversations in the lunchroom for a dialogue assignment. To begin to understand color, we went to the town dump. One day she bought a bunch of objects right into the classroom. Handlebars, screwdriver, a cup, set them out and told us, look at each object and make a list of what we could use them for, except for what they were meant for. For homework that night, she asked us to interview an older person about an object in his or her house that meant something to him or her. A pretty dish, tablecloth, a figurine, she called it a found object. Of course, I knew exactly who I was gonna interview. Do you guys have any ideas of who she's gonna interview? If you said pop, you are correct. And he looks like he's holding a frame. I wonder if that's his found object. Pop! Pop and I walked around his house together. What are you gonna pick up as your phone object, Pop? I asked. He couldn't seem to decide. After a time, he walked over to his mantle and took down a beautiful photo photograph. This lovely woman is my Millie. I was in love with her from the first moment I laid eyes on her, he whispered quietly. She was so lovely, Patricia. When she walked into a room, the sun and moon would peek into the window to get a glimpse of her. Oh, how I miss her, his voice trailed off. 
He talked to me about his Millie for the next hour. I started writing before I left his house. I think we can tell that this man truly loved his wife based on the word choice that Patricia is using in the story. Word choice is very important. That's why I always tell you guys, don't start your sentences the same way. Try to find different ways. Oh no, it doesn't look like she liked her essay. I was sure I nailed it this time. I wrote with oodles of heart and feeling. I couldn't wait for Miss Keller to see this essay. When she handed it back, there was a C scrawled at the bottom again. What did she want from me anyway? She kept me after school that day. Miss Barber, your paper on your neighbor's Millie was, well, adequate. But we, but where are the words that truly show emotion? Then she turned and looked right at me. The reader needs to feel what you feel, Miss Barber, but not in an ordinary way. Be daring, unexpected, surprising, original. Now she gazed deeply into my eyes. You have the words, Patricia. You have to give them wings. So here's our problem. Patricia is having difficulty writing with feeling and heart. All right, let's see if she gets that problem solved. I love how she draws Pop. He reminds me of my grandpa. The day I found Pop out in his backyard, that day I found Pop out in his backyard feeding his koi fish in the pond. Pop could see I was upset. I told him everything that the boys in class were still calling me teacher's pet, even though Miss Keller was harder on me than anyone. That today she said I lacked emotional connection in my writing. My guess is old Killer Keller has taken a real interest in you, or she would have just let you sit there like a bump on a log. As for the teasing, do you know what my first name is? It's Lynn. The guys in my class love that, and I was the only boy in the cooking class too. They never let me live that down either. The two of us laughed so hard we could hardly catch our breath. I had noticed before that Pop sometimes took pills. He said they were to keep his ticker going. I knew that meant his heart. Today I noticed he slipped two pills under his tongue. Hold on to that, guys. That's going to come up again. Oh, wow. She still looks, right? Still that face. Days with Miss Keller seemed to fly by. None of them easy for me. Then one day, she called us together. Today, I'm assigning you the dreaded term essay. I'd heard about it all right. I've taught you many forms of writing, dialogue, scene, opinion essay, personal narrative. Choose one of these for your last big assignment and choose well. The grade I give you will determine if you pass. I was already sweating. To make things worse, she asked me to stay after for a little chat. Patricia, she said, I hope you choose a personal narrative because quite frankly, your writing still lacks emotional connection with the reader. But no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't come up with a subject for my term essay, emotional enough for Miss Keller. She wants to be, Trisha, she's keep, she keeps pushing her, right? She's not letting her off the hook. So there's other forms of writing that Trisha is really good at, but she keeps pushing her to the personal narrative. Personal narratives, if you don't remember, are stories about you and your life. So Miss Keller, so, She's, her solution is to keep t keep pushing Patricia. She keeps pushing her to, throughout the book to write with emotion and feeling. She's not just letting her get off. The last Sunday before my deadline to hand in the topic, all of his kids, Stuart, Winnie, Chantel, were at Pop's Baking Cookies for a black party to help raise money for Miss Scudder across the street. She had fallen down her back stairs and and broken bones. All right, who are Stuart and Winnie? Do you guys remember? You have to think back a couple of weeks ago. There was a book called Chicken Sunday. Do you guys remember who they are now? <laughs> As we were rolling the cookies out, Stuart asked me how I liked Miss Keller. I told him that no matter what I did, no matter what I wrote, it didn't seem to please her. To pop it all off, I said, tomorrow our topic is due for the term essay and I don't have one. That reminds me. I told you that I'd tell you a story about Miss Keller, Pop said thoughtfully as he rolled out a ball of cookie dough. All you kids know she's one tough teacher, but not too long ago, 
she came across one of the most talented writers she'd seen. She picked apart everything he wrote, had him do it over and over until he got it right. Truth is, he never worked so hard for a teacher in his life. So what happened to that kid, Pop? Stuart asked. Well, he became a writer. Went to work for the biggest newspaper in Chicago, then the biggest paper in Washington, D.C. He covered stories from South America to the Middle East to Soviet Russia. Once he won the Pul Pulitzer Prize for writing, which is a really prestigious award. He probably would have gone on to do that anyway, Miss Keller or not. Not really, Trisha. This boy's family could never have afforded to raise money for his tuition and fees and personally saw to it. Oh, excuse me. Uh, Miss Keller, well, I skipped, I skipped ahead. Trisha, this boy's family could never have afforded to, to send him to college. Miss Keller not only taught him how to write, she raised money for his tuition and fees and personally saw to it that he attended journalism school. Otherwise, he might have ended up working in his father's bakery. Hmm, Pop said with a glint in his eye. Have you guys figured out who the boy is? That's right. That kid was my own son. And I, for one, am grateful for that dogged, high-spirited woman, Killer Keller. Without her, who knows? He slipped another pill under his tongue. We can look in their faces to see that something sad has happened. Not a week later, still with no essay topic, I'd come early to Miss Keller's class when the office secretary came in and gave me a note to her. Miss Barber, Miss Keller said, we need to go to the office. She looked shocked and sad. When we got to the office, my mother was there. I could see she had been crying. She had told me that Pop had passed away that morning, a sudden heart attack. I think we're all feeling something right now and that's because Patricia writes with emotion. We know how dear Pop was to her. As we pulled into our garage, I saw Pop's sons. They looked so heartbroken. All I wanted was to go through his house one last time. His sons invited me over. I walked through every room, touched his pillow on his bed, ran my hand across the back of his favorite chair held his bakery coat that he wore when we helped him make cookies. I couldn't stop crying. The sky wasn't happy anymore. How could the earth still be turning when someone like Pop had left it? That night, I sat at my desk and started writing. I wrote and wrote and wrote. It seemed like the whole neighborhood was at Pop's funeral, even Miss Keller, and the shops on College Avenue closed for the day. Everything looked different somehow. My sadness hurt everywhere. Long after it was due, I placed the piece I had written the day Pop died on Miss Keller's desk. I didn't really care anymore whether I impressed her or not. All that mattered was how I felt about him. A few days later, I get a pink slip from Miss Keller to come and see her. My heart almost stopped. Anyone who got a pink slip was about to get real bad news because it was the end of the term. She must have hated my essay. I started sobbing. First pop, now this. I don't even know if I'll pass. Oh, look at that. There's some different emotion on this page, isn't there? When I walked into her room, she actually took both my hands. Patricia, dear, I'm so sorry for your loss, she said. Then I saw my essay folded in half on her desk. I have graded your essay, she began. I don't want you to unfold it until you are home. Do you understand? I shook my head yes. Then she did something that startled me. She hugged me. She actually hugged me. Then she whispered, Patricia, you wrote a stunning tribute to Pop, the crowning example of a personal narrative. This story always chokes me up. Can you guys guess what her grade was? I think you can. My heart sang as I ran all the way 
home with my essay still folded in my hand. As I climbed the hill, I stopped and looked up at Pop's house for a moment. You're with Millie now, Pop. Let me read that. You're with Millie now, Pop, I whispered. That thought made me warm inside. Then I opened my folded paper. There, written in red across the top of the cover sheet, Patricia, your spelling still <laughs> leaves much to be desired. However, you've given your words wings. I'm departing from my custom. Here is your A. My heart warms whenever I think of Miss Keller. She told me that she was impressed with how I used Pop's very own thesaurus to write my papers. I remember his notes were in the margins in his own handwriting. When I read them, it seemed to bring me closer to him. Certainly, I did use the word love. However, I used every form of it. To this day, when I think of Pop and Miss Keller, my thoughts soar, for I shall always regard them as beloved. Patricia Polacco. Okay, I just love, love, love these books. And so look, I don't know if you can tell, but my eyes are a little, I, I have a couple of little tears because Patricia Polacco is such a good writer. She writes with such emotion and such heart that I am able to connect to what she's, what she's writing. Okay, so back to our story elements. An A from Miss Keller by Patricia Polacco characters patricia pop miss keller setting pop's house and miss keller's classroom problem we talked about in the story was patricia's having difficulty writing with feeling and heart the solution was for her teacher to what what does she do does she ever does she let her get off the hook does she say ah that's okay whatever does patricia say oh c's fine i don't need to do better she does something. Miss Keller continues to do something for Patricia to get her to the point where she can get that A. Um, and the resolution, the ending, how does it end? What happened in the end? You see my husband? I wonder if you could hear him typing when he was, when I was reading, he's sitting right next to me. We also had a helicopter flying around. It's quite in a busy day out here on Mrs. Wright's back porch. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that story as much as I did and Please go fill out your story element sheets. I'll see you in a little bit. Bye.